Good afternoon, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Welcome to the Futures Market Outlook for the week of July 30th. Uh, and we're going to begin with the Imini Dow Industrial Average. After a red day in the markets uh, on Friday, uh, where most of these future indices have had uh, a big move down, S&P has dropped more than 25 points, NASDAQ 131 points to the downside, and Russell lost 39 points. Uh, Imini Dow was the only index down 99, uh, 99 points on Friday. However, it is the one index that is holding the best. Uh, so right now, relative strength is coming from uh, the Imini Dow. We're going to take a quick look at the daily chart. So daily chart, although it triggered a reversal on the daily chart, is still trading into an area of support all the way to the 25.350. A reversal at this point, we've pretty much had uh, a quick bounce into the uh, into the close, and actually the bounce came uh, after the big drop. Uh, in most of these indices into 1 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Eastern has reversed the price and so far holding. Holding actually really weak if we look at the uh, if we look at the hourly charts, uh, obviously we do have some relative strength that is coming, like I mentioned before, into the e Dow at 25,450. Uh, landing into this prior high here that uh, may a price the price at this point and price may get rejected at the 450 level so this is something that i'm going to watch in the overnight uh price uh in the overnight price action and also coming into tomorrow's and getting ready for day trading obviously and swing trading uh next week and obviously this week all right so uh we if we get the price rejection at the 25 450 zone uh we are going to have definitely a battleground and turbulent zone all the way to to the 25 370 zone uh, and uh, if we if the price is gonna manage to break below this range it's gonna have a more accelerated drop into the 25 300 now let's move on to the daily charts and let's see where the next support level is going to be and the next support level is into this prior high uh, that was set on July 19th and we also have a confluence zone that is coming from the 10 exponential moving average at the 25 uh, to 20 zone so the overall price action for next week we will actually look at the price pattern and if the market should uh, receive some positive signals and if we should move to the upside uh, YM Imini Dow Industrial Average has more odds to continue and accelerate to the upside than the rest of these uh, the rest of the Imini index uh, index uh, futures so right now, although we are uh, we tapped into resistance at the 585 level, if we break the 585 level, this is going to be the catalyst for the price for an acceleration higher back into the 800 level. So this is contingent on the price accelerating into the 570 zone. Over 570, we will be bullish for throughout the week. Uh, and prices price may accelerate higher, like I mentioned, all the way into the uh, 25,700 and 25,800. Now let's move on to the mini &E S&P 500. The mini &E S&P 500 index futures uh, again finished the week in a relatively neutral mode. So we didn't give back all of the profits for last week. So we're still stabilizing. We're still not breaching uh, prior weeks. Uh, low, which is 27.89. If we happen to breach this area, the 27.90 zone in this week, in this trading week that starts less than six hours from now, uh, we may see an acceleration lower. And the next price target that I'm going to be looking for is going to be into the 27.70 area. Let's move back to the daily chart for more uh, for more information on that. So, like I've mentioned before, 2800 is going to be once again the big catalyst. And remember that we have been balancing out at the 2708 uh, through 27 uh, 2710. But if we break below that area back into the 2800, that's going to be back into the support area again. And it's going to be very important for the price to hold this area. If the price is going to breach this area, it's going to slice through this area 
then we may have an acceleration lower back into uh, back into the 80s once again. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm uh, going to go ahead and um, uh, calculate the next support level that we can actually look for more uh, for a possible reversal or continuation too. So like I mentioned before, this 20, uh, 2800 is going to be a big catalyst and it's deriving also from this prior pivot high that was set on uh, the 10th, on July 10th. So if this level is going to be breached, we may see that acceleration lower all the way into this 2789, 2790. We also have the 20 uh, simple moving average into that point, and we also have this prior pivot high that is going to create uh, that support, and we may see a reversal off of that point. So at this point, uh, although we are uh, trading, we closed into uh, into the prior area of support that was set uh, on July 18th. Uh, through July 18th and 19th, if we don't see a reversal at this point, we may see a continuation lower. And this information we have from this uh, hourly chart, we have a congestion, we have a cluster, it's actually a weak cluster. And if the 200 moving average is not going to create any kind of support for price action at this point, and also prior price action that is creating this minor support for current for price at this current level between uh, 2810 and 28, uh, 2815, uh, then we should not we we may not see a further acceleration higher. Uh, what I will be monitoring from the open tonight in the overnight trading session and also going into next week is a break above 2821. If the price is going to break over 2821, we may see an acceleration higher. Price uh, uh, price velocity may take uh, may uh, may raise the price all the way into the 28 to 24 to 28 30, and this is going to be a decision point a decision uh, area once again. Again, we're going to be looking for either a continuation over 30 or price rejection, but this is going to be one of the key points. It is deriving from this prior pivot, uh, prior pivot high, and this is from last week on Tuesday. So we're going to be watching this area very, very carefully. All right, let's move on to NASDAQ. NASDAQ was uh, one of uh, one of the weakest, actually, was the second weakest index followed, uh, uh, second weakest index, the weaker index was Russell uh, at this point. And uh, uh, we're going to begin with, uh, let's begin with the weekly chart here because uh, I'm looking for the day trading perspective uh, on uh, these uh, indices and also for the swing trade perspective. So like I said, NASDAQ was uh, had a, a really climactic run into, uh, into the uh, New York trading session. Uh, that began close, uh, that began actually off the um, open, exactly off the open. And the deceleration uh, actually uh, kicked in at about one o'clock. One o'clock was the break time, so uh, when everybody hit the brakes and literally they they try to hold into the close of the session. But uh, this congestion that we have here, this cluster that we have here, is still very very weak. Uh, 73.22 is resistance at this point, and if the price is not going to man, it's not going to break through this resistance at 73.20 to 73.25. Uh, then we may see a, the price re price rejection that may oppress the price and may push it back down into these lows that were created on Friday. And we can see from the daily chart, I'm going to show you in just a couple of seconds, uh, that we may have room to continue more to the downside. So this is going to be on watch. Uh, this cluster is going to be on high, high watch, especially in the overnight trading session and going into uh, going into the New York session tomorrow. So the key levels right here, we need to break uh, 73.23. Remember, this is a minor area of resistance that is deriving from this prior pivot low that was set on Monday at the open. So this is going to be key right here. And also, if we break obviously below these lows right here at the uh, 72.80, we may have room to continuation lower. How low can NASDAQ go? NASDAQ in many futures. Now, let's take a look at the overall chart. Uh, the next area of support is coming 
all the way at the 7230 zone where we have a prior pivot high that was set back in June on June 7th and that is the next area of support that we see here we also had a pullback into the same location pullback and release all the way to the upside that carried the price uh, and we actually had a new high that was created at 7530 uh, just last week all right so these are what we're expecting uh, right now in uh, from, from from a longer perspective, uh, I've mentioned the 70 area, the 72, 70 area to 72, 50 area. 72, 50 area is going to be the problematic area for a, uh, an acceleration back into the next area of support, which is 72, 20, deriving from this prior pivot high, minor support level developing at this point. And we also have a confluence with the 10 exponential moving average. So we can see some kind of price reaction at that point. All right, let's move on and let's continue with Russell. Russell, one of the weakest indices, we had the sharpest decline, 2.3% 2. 2. 2. and also close to 40 points to the downside. You don't see this every, every single day, especially when it comes to Russell. So there was a massive distribution that happened on Friday. Uh, the weekly chart suggests that if we open below, we may have room to uh, to even uh, release some more selling pressure all the way into the 1650 zone. 1650 zone is an area of support. Uh, moving to the daily chart, uh, and, and again, it, it is one of the weakest. It is uh, uh, we closed at the low in Russell, so that's not a good sign for a recoup uh, uh, for a recoup at least into the first uh, uh, moments from the open and so on. Uh, the next support level that we have in the Russell and the fact that we have a huge tradable void, this is what created the price velocity to uh, increase its dynamics in following through to the lower targets. The next target level is going to be into the 1650. That is going to be a major support level at this price, and we can expect some price reaction off of the 1650. Uh, so also Russell is going to be uh, uh, on... A continued conti is going to continue to be on my watch list as being one of the weakest indices. Pullback sells in Russell may continue lower as low as into the 1650 zone. All right, let's move on to some commodities that we have uh, that we have uh, on our panel. Uh, we're going to begin with uh, crude oil. Uh, futures and uh, since we're on to the daily chart uh, there uh, they seem to be topping out at the 70 dollar zone uh, what I really like is uh, the weekly charts on uh, on oil and over $70 we have talked about this uh, in our trading room over $70 we may see a reversal back to the upside of uh, visiting uh, visiting prices of 72 73 and back into these highs uh, even above the 73 zone uh, for a continuation higher so the weekly chart uh, is actually looking very strong at this point the more we accelerate into the $70 the more we can actually potentially move a little bit higher from uh, from the uh, trending uh, from the day trading uh, trending day trading trending perspective uh, we had an immediate reaction that came in at exactly one o'clock when most of these uh, uh, when most of these uh, most of the indices in the futures market have reversed we have seen the same reversal that happened at one o'clock exactly and we're running right here into a minor area of support at the $69 this is a critical area because uh, if the price is going to re get rejected at this price zone, we may see an acceleration lower. And if the price is going to trade below 68.80, we may see the price come back down into the 68.40 zone. So it is very important for price to try to move up a little bit and try to break above the 69 zone, push higher into the 69.20. So therefore, if the price is going to break through the 69.20, any pullback into the $69 may be buyable for a target level into the 69.80 and back into the $70. I would love to see the price continue higher and push higher into and create these higher highs and higher lows going into the $70 so we can have a better risk for a possible swing and also for a possible day trade moving forward. Let's move on to gold. Uh, gold futures. Um, we've rolled into a new contract uh, last uh, week. And let's begin with the daily chart. Daily chart has been uh, literally accumulating a lot of, has been coiling 
and it has set a top into the 1236 area and it has not gone anywhere yet we have pinned uh you have you see the bottom here at the 1210 zone and let's bring back the weekly chart weekly chart seems a little bit more appealing to me uh this is why gold is having such a hard time at the 1236 and 1237 area we have a prior pivot low that is a 1237 that is creating a lot of resistance for current price action we are also stabilizing as you can see we have uh, pushed through this 200 moving average uh, have tapped into the double support level here at very close to the 1200 level reversed and this week a pretty neutral candle right here and uh, I do have an alert for the 1237.20 zone I see this as a possible swing by moving into next week um, I, I mean moving into this week today Sunday okay uh, so if we get a push to the upside we may release some buying pressure that may take the price into the 1260 as a target level as a price target level so from the weekly chart we look positive on gold continuing uh, continuing uh, through the week but it is contingent on the price breaking the 1237 area all right let's begin with uh, some more commodities and what I have on my list is actually uh, heating oil and heating oil has been on fire it has been really really rising a uh, really nice price action and uh, last week we've triggered uh, we've checked we've have triggered a weekly buy at the 2.14 level acceleration a little higher uh, and again it has been battling this area the 214 to 215 level from this prior pivot high that was established back in January 29th uh, we may have room for a continuation higher into the 220s once again so uh, I see the uh, I see a pattern of price continuation as long as this price uh, price action is intact we may see some more uh, some more buying pressure coming into heating oil right now we had a red a red day on um, uh, on Friday uh, we have not triggered a weekly sell we're still stabilizing you see this prior pivot high here from uh, July 13th is creating support for current price action we, actually we do have a strong area that is coming from uh, actually an overlap of the 10 exponential and the 20 uh, simple moving average and uh, we are we actually traded on Friday a, a little bit higher than the 50 uh, we landed into this cluster here so this is what the problem is right now this prior resistance but the more we stabilize and even a pullback into the 214 to 213 and a half we may see a reversal that may push the price higher back into these highs and into the 220s and I see another target level into the two uh, into the 222 and two even into the 225 may release some buying pressure into that zone uh, RB and this is gasoline RBOB uh, landed into resistance right here made a peekable high above the resistance area very perky and very very strong and uh, if we break above this area and we stabilize above this area again we may see higher prices uh, and a price continuation into the 220 and back to the 225 and 228 so this is going to be on close watch obviously it had an acceleration higher for the last one two three four five six seven eight nine days so i think it's a uh, high time for a little bit of a pullback here double top let's watch a pullback and let's see if we get it back into the 212 zone or the 210 area to uh, 210 area and the 215 area uh, may potentially create another buying opportunity for rbob for a continuation higher um let's take a look at natural gas and since we're uh discussing energies here let's take a look at natural gas and uh natural gas um uh, this is the daily chart right here where last we had a pretty good last week was a pretty good week for uh for natural gas uh we had tuesday wednesday thursday and friday acceleration to the upside let's take a look at the weekly chart and see if we're setting something up here the 2.80 is going to be a launch pad for price for natural for natural gas uh, it's not going to be an easy ride because it has a lot of uh, key strong levels that are going to try to push the price a little lower. We have an abundance of moving averages here. So not only that, we have a the 200 moving average, 
that is oppressing a lot of resistance at that point. But we have the 20 uh, simple moving average, we have the 10 exponential, and we have the 50 simple moving average that is creating some price oppression at that point. But if we release above those areas, the more we accelerate a little higher, I'm going to watch it um, on the one hour chart and also going to be watching it uh, onto uh, the four hour chart for a continuation pattern and obviously for uh, for a smaller risk at this point. So um, I just want to bring the monthly chart real quick, even though we have been uh, trading in a very sideways pattern for a few months now, for a few considerable months. Uh, still, the buy zone remains into the 250s to 260 areas and any bounce into this area may create price acceleration to the upside. All right, so let's move on now to copper and uh, let's check out the, the charts. And we had a pullback into the 50 uh, simple moving average, also a strong confluence area deriving from these prior pivot highs that create minor support at this price point at the 266 and the upper 266 level. We have a little bit of lift in price at the 276. I would actually like copper if it trades over $3. So this is the pattern that I'm seeing. And by by the way this is the monthly chart we had uh we had a sideways range acceleration higher pull back into the 10 exponential acceleration higher uh hit resistance we have pulled back we didn't hold the 10 ema did not hold and obviously this prior pivot high did not hold so this minor resistance was a little bit more fragile wanted to retest a little bit of uh, a little bit steeper uh, so we didn't continue higher, but again, we're still respecting from the monthly perspective. We're still respecting the higher highs and higher lows. So uh, if we trade above three dollars, this is going to be my trigger for a continuation higher for a longer term trade in copper. Also, from the weekly chart last week, we've triggered. So this is a really nice trigger that we had into the 280 area. Uh, 280 was the trigger point was the pullback buy. Uh, it, with a weekly trigger uh, at 280, we've continued with higher uh, and we still have a lot of room to continue higher into the 290. So I'm going to watch uh, copper um, uh, and let's zoom in to the daily chart right here. OK, so we have established a bottom. So remember, the higher time frames uh, are telling us that we may still have a continuation to the upside, but we just need the price to stabilize, root, pivot into, uh, create that sustainable support level from which it can actually lift and reverse back to the upside. Right now, we pretty much have here um, a 180 reversal. So we had an acceleration higher, and this is the daily chart. And uh, we've we've had Thursday to turn around here, uh, and we had Friday a pretty stable day. So we're gonna watch this area. Remember that on Friday we finished into the 278.5, which is a minor support level at. Uh, at current level. So we're going to possibly watch for a continuation higher and if the price should trigger 283. I'm actually going to set an alert right here because I'm going to have it on close watch, obviously above. Okay, so if we break above this level, we may have a continuation higher back into the 286, which is uh, last week's high, and then uh, a continuation into the 288 zone. So again, this is going to be a highly turbulent level, but if we break through the 288 level, then we have a really nice tradable void all the way into $2.96. <coughs> Excuse me. And sorry about that. I'm still recouping after a really, really bad call. All right, let's take a, look, a quick look right now at uh, wheat, <clears throat> wheat futures, and uh, let's bring the monthly chart up. The monthly chart has been consolidating, uh, double bottoming right here into this prior pivot low, right, prior pivot low. What I do like uh, about this pattern about wheat is that it, uh, it moved a little lower, has created support at the 281 zone, lifted, and then created another secondary support level at the 409. So we do have our uh, second higher low at this level and we're really trying and once again we do have uh we do have uh, across uh the 50 and the 10 ema we have bottoming tails that are suggesting that the price may continue higher at this point so the monthly chart looks like if it, we break the 550 again we may have room for a continuation higher let's move on to the weekly chart weekly chart seems rather choppy with pretty wide stops i typically don't trade something that doesn't have any tight stops 
I like the bounce that occurred on the weekly chart. Very, very strong. Uh, we have the fanning out of the moving averages here. We have the 50 moving average and we have the support from uh, the 200 moving average. We have a lot of bottoming tails at this point and the breakout came over the 515 zone. From the daily chart, we had a really big day last week, and this was on Thursday, a release higher tap into this uh, double top right here. So I think the more we pull back, back into the 520, we can see a reversal at the 520 and for a continuation higher. Let's take a look at something that I have been in, in a trade that I have called and I have been in for quite some time. <coughs> I do apologize for the coughing. I try to turn off the mic whenever I cough. Still recouping after a really, really bad cold. <clears throat> so I still see uh, feeder cattle for a continuation higher, especially when it comes to the weekly chart. If we break over the 155 level, we may continue back into the 160 zone. <clears throat> okay, and last one. We're going to talk a little bit about live cattle. It has been basing for quite some time. We do have a, a pattern of higher highs right here and a retest of the same support level developing a cluster um, at the median level of 105. We finally broke above the range. <clears throat> and this is last week and this week we have managed to trade above. And if we stabilize between 106.5 and a 110 zone, we may have that reversal that may bring the price back up at least into the 112 to 113 level. This is all for now. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you would like to trade with us, you can visit our website. It is tradeoutloud.com. Uh, we're running uh, futures and uh, we're running a futures day trading and swing trading room. Also, we call swing trades from stocks, so stock swing trades and ETFs. Um, and if you would like to learn more about it, you could shoot us an email at info at tradeoutloud.com or just visit tradeoutloud.com under the trading room tab and you find more information about that. This is all for now. Good luck, everyone, uh, coming into the uh, next week. And uh, let's, uh, let's trade into the green. Have a wonderful trading week.